So here's the big question. How are entrepreneurs like us, who have been hustling and struggling to make it to success, who seem to make it one step forward, only to fall two steps back, who are dedicated, determined, and driven, how do we finally break through and win? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Brian Kelly, and this is the Mind Body Business Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. Oh, my goodness, we have a celebrity in the house. I am so excited. Mr. Seth Green is going to be joining us on camera in just a few moments. The Mind Body Business Show, what is that all about? It is about what I call the three pillars of success that I learned from studying only successful people starting a little over a decade ago, finding out what made them successful. What were their, what was their secret sauce? And these patterns kept developing and bubbling to the top over and over and over. And it were the three things that you probably can guess what they are because they are part of the title of the show. Mind being mindset. Each individual that I studied that had, had achieved a great level of success had a very powerful, but more importantly, flexible mindset and body. To a person, they all took care of themselves, both nutritionally and through exercise, just doing it on a regular basis, exercise and nutrition, just being smart and uh, eating and drinking what was healthy for them. And then business, that is multi, multifaceted. And these folks that I studied had mastered the myriad of skill sets that are required to create and then build and grow a successful business. And we're talking about things like marketing, sales, team building, systematizing, leadership. I could go on all night. There are so many. The good news for everybody, including yourself, is that you don't have to master every single skill set that is necessary because let's face it, mastering anything takes a long time, just one. And that's the good news. If you just master one skill set and it's one of those that I just mentioned, then you're set. And what is that one skill set? It is the skill set of leadership. Once you have mastered that skill set, you now can delegate to those who have mastered the other skill sets you have yet to do. And so once you've mastered leadership, that just opens the doors wide open for you to scale your business. And speaking of scaling and successful people, to a person that I have run into that have achieved a high level of success, they are also very avid and voracious readers. And real quickly, we're gonna move over and segue into a little segment I affectionately call Bookmarks. Bookmarks, born to read. Bookmarks, ready, steady, read. Bookmarks, brought to you by reachyourpeaklibrary.com. There you see reachyourpeaklibrary.com on my left shoulder, looking to the right. If you're watching live, if you're listening on podcast, it is reachyourpeaklibrary.com. And for anyone watching or listening, please, I implore of you, rather than then taking off and clicking away and going and looking at resources because you're going to get multiple resources. If, if I know Seth Green at all, you're going to get some great resources to go look up, write them down and then wait until the show is over and then go visit them because I would hate for you to miss one golden nugget that Seth's going to bring to the table that could potentially change your life forever because you took your attention elsewhere for just a moment. It only takes a moment. So please do yourself a favor and stay with us, stay tuned the entire show. Uh, if you're listening to this as a recording, you need to take a break, hit the pause button for sure. <laughs> you don't wanna miss a word that Seth is going to speak tonight. And reachyourpeaklibrary.com, very briefly, it is a site that I had built literally with you in mind, the entrepreneur, the budding business person looking to grow their business to the next level. And what I've done is I've compiled a list of books that I've read over the years that had profound impact on me in business and in personal life, sometimes both. And I put them here in under one roof so that you would have a resource to go to quickly, that where you could quickly find a good read and, and know with some degree of certainty that at least one other successful person has said, yeah, this is a good one. Uh, that's the only reason it's here. This is not a money-making website, believe me. Every one of these buttons uh, goes to Amazon. And so this is here for you, my gift, and I hope you take advantage of that. I've had a lot of people mention they went here to grab their next book and they love it. 
And speaking of loving it, it's that time. I am done yakking about the intro of this show. It's time to bring on the one and only Seth Green. Here we go. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. It is the one, the only Seth Green. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Brian. It is an honor to be here. I'm super excited. Oh, the honor is all mine. Thank you, brother. You're you're an amazing guy. You had me on your Sharkpreneur podcast some time ago. That was a phenomenal experience. Thank you. Uh, I love paying it forward or back, whichever way, sideways, it all works out. Uh, before we jump in, and I'm going to give you the, the intro that you deserve because I respect you, my man. A uh, little bit of housekeeping for everyone watching and listening live, live, stay to the end because you are going to get uh, uh, information on how to enter to win a five-night stay at a five-star luxury resort. Compliments of the BigInsiderSecrets.com. It's that big red emblem if you're watching. And uh, they give this show, or they give us the ability to give away a vacation stay every single show. So thank you to Jason Nast of the BigInsiderSecrets.com. Two more real quick, and then we're moving on to the man of the hour. I promise. All right. If you're struggling with putting a live show together and it's overwhelming and you want a lot of the processes done for you while still enabling you to put on a high quality show and connect with great people like Seth and grow your business all at the same time, then head on over to CarpetBombMarketing.com. Carpet Bomb Marketing. Saturate the marketplace with your message. And then one of the key components that is contained in the Carpet Bomb Marketing courses, uh, this is one that you'll learn how to absolutely master, is the very service we use to stream our live shows right here on the Mind Body Business Show. And a little birdie tells me that Seth Green uses the same resource, which is really cool. Over the course of the past nine plus years, we have tried, I can't tell you how many of these quote unquote TV studio solutions for live streaming. And StreamYard, I have to tell you, is the best of the best. It combines supreme ease of use along with unmatched functionality. So you can start streaming high quality, professional looking live shows for free with StreamYard right now, but don't do it now. Remember to write it down, write it down, visit it later. And this is the website you wanna write down, ryp.im forward slash stream live. Let's get busy with our amazing guest, Mr. Seth Green. And now, time to give him the introduction he deserves. Seth Green is the nation's foremost authority on how to grow your own cult of 50 evangelists promoting your business every week for a year. I'm already intrigued. I'm leaning in. Seth is the co-host of the Sharkpreneur podcast with Shark Tank's Kevin Harrington. Ever heard of him? which was named the number six podcast to listen to. He is an eight-time, eight-time best-selling author who has been interviewed on, get this, NBC News, CBS News, Forbes, Inc., CBS Money Watch, and many more. I'm sure we could go on for all night, but we want to listen to this guy and pick his wonderful, amazing brain and see what makes him so successful. So now, formally, officially, Seth Green... <laughs> Welcome to the show at last. <laughs> Thank you so much. Again, super, super pumped to be here. Thank you, my brother. So I love, I love, love, love introducing every guest that comes on the show because we get to learn a lot just from that introduction. You know, on the surface, your accolades, your accomplishments, your successes, sometimes even failures, which are just as equally as important to learn from. What I like to do right from the onset, Seth, is go deep. And what I mean by go deep is literally go inside that big, beautiful brain of yours and find out what is making you as successful as you are. So when it comes to when you get up in the morning, you know, being an entrepreneur, it's simple, right? It's auto autopilot. It's every day is a piece of cake. No, <laughs> it's, it's very difficult. And knowing that every day is going to come with its challenges. What is it that you do to establish that positive, productive mindset that when you get up in the morning, and you know that the day is in front of you with all of this fun that's about to transpire. What is it? What's going through your mind to get you started? And then what goes on through your mind during the day to keep you going through and power through to the end? Sure. So that's a multi-part question. I'll see if I can remember all of it. So 
to um i have a morning routine that i do every single morning weekends weekdays doesn't matter um the first thing i do in the morning is i use a polar beat chest strap along with an elite hrv app to tell me what my heart rate variability is i have a whoop strap on my wrist that tells me how well my sleep helped me recover from the day before um, i start every day with a meditation then i do some movement exercises some primal breathing from tony robbins some incantation some bouncing on a rebounder um i start a shout when i start my shower i start on ice cold for the first couple minutes to wake up every nerve ending in my body and then i also have a physical device that is a client of ours called a hap b which is like the literal netflix for emotions you put it on you push a button and it literally changes your emotional state. So I have a whole setup in order to get me primed, pumped, ready, and excited for what's to come. Holy moly, that's that's mo that's a normal person's entire day right there, what you just said. So I'm, I'm genuinely curious, how long does that routine take to get through in the morning? Uh, under 30 minutes. Wow. Including the cold shower. Yeah, the shower must be very fast. <laughs> well, the first, yes. Uh, the, the freezing part is a couple minutes, and then it turns into a regular shower. But yes, you, I, I do not. Um, I am very, very focused. I love that. And this is so cool, uh, Seth. So many. I've, you're, I've interviewed over 150 on this show and about as many on a prior show before that of successful entrepreneurs. And many, many of those who have achieved the highest level of success do what you do and they have a routine. And the cool thing is, listen to what said, I mean, a lot of what you said was intriguing to me that I might want to incorporate into my routine. Do you have this written down anywhere? Um, we do, we actually have, it's funny, I had so many clients hear about it on our client monthly trainings that we actually came up with a better life technology box where we ship you all the tech that I just mentioned and then literally you're in a group with me and I can see their stats every single day. I can see what they're doing. I can see where they're falling down. I can see what they're doing awesome. And it's, I mean, we don't normally sell it as a service. We just kind of gift it to some of our clients, but it's become kind of popular in our little tribe. That is genius, my man. Oh, you should sell that. My God. And then bring them into your group and then help track their progress. Oh, I got goosebumps. That is genius. I love that. Uh, Thank you. I, 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 I want to check into that after the show, if you don't mind. So, um, we'll get you a box. Oh man, that would be awesome because I'm a tech guy. I love tech. And when you started saying app and and band and stuff that's tracking your sleep, I'm like leaning in more and more. Um, so the key point that I wanted to put across to our audience is the fact that he has a routine. What he does in his routine isn't as important as the fact that he has one. Um, and what I, when I say it's not as important is because what's important is you find a routine that works for you. What he does, I mean, I mean, I don't know about the cold shower part, brother. I've heard about it. I've tried it. And I'm a, I'm a little girl when I get in. I just like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can't handle that. That's just too much shock for me in the morning. But um, I, could, I could do it. Um, definitely. I model success. I'm a fan of modeling success. When I find somebody says, well, if you take a cold shower, you'll never get cancer and you'll earn a million dollars the next year. Then I'll do it every day, all day from Sunday. In that um, case, fill in the blanks. And that's what I just said. I love it. Love it. So yeah, I want to learn about your routine, like literally in detail. I, I'm not kidding. Um, we could do a whole separate show on it, I'm sure. Yeah. And and it would be a great something like an ebook or something to provide in addition. I, I'm just I'm just going crazy on marketing mode. Um, and that's just what I love doing. And I know that's what you love doing. You're an expert at marketing. That's why I'm I'm like a giddy schoolgirl again. Uh, this time I'm happy uh, because I've got an absolute expert in marketing, which can be one of the most difficult things to crack uh, for business owners. It's what I run into time and time again with the people I work with, friends of mine, you know, the marketing, getting eyeballs to your product, your brand, your services. It, it can be difficult unless you know the right ways to go about it and how to do it. And that's why I am excited. So um, I talked about a little bit in the opening about the importance of reading books. And I'm just, I'm going to throw out a big guess here. I think I know the answer, but would you consider yourself to be an avid reader? And if so, what, bro what book are you reading now? Or what was the last one you just finished? So I'm a voracious reader. I read about a book every other day. So I read a ton what I am reading right now, I'm rereading a product. I'm reading a product by Frank Kern called Mass Control. 
which came uh, out a long time ago. It is one of the few marketing courses I don't own. And I had a friend send it to me, remind me of it, and then send it to me so I could read it. Um, I am reading a book on um, uh, Scaling Up by Vern Harnish, uh, who, is, who was just on our podcast a couple of days ago, one of the best business books of all time, in my opinion. Wow. I am reading another book on, it's kind of on the similar topic of how to scale a company to the next level. Um, but I forget, I can get you titles of them because I'm reading about five or six at the same time. You're one of those. I don't know how you guys do that. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. I can't, I, I just want to power through and get done with one. And I'm, I'm reading the Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. And there's a couple others on my bedside table that I can't see from here. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm so appreciative that you're bringing these up because I have my, my team is now going through the show when it's over. We transcribe it. And they're pulling out book titles that are mentioned on the show by the guests that may not be on yeah. reachyourpeaklibrary.com. And I love that because it adds additional proven, you know, vetted books and resources for people to go. So um, scaling up, you said Vern Harnish? Yes, V-E-R-N-E Harnish, H-A-R-N-I-S-H. And so for everyone watching and listening, this is what I do. Uh, this is, And, you know, it works. I just model success. And when you hear someone who has achieved the level of success like Seth Green and they are recommending books, or at least he didn't come out and recommend it, but he said they're good. That's a recommendation in my book. I'm recommending. No pun intended. <laughs> and when that happens, right after the show's over, I'm on Audible and I'm ordering those. They're in my library. I kid you not. Every show I do this. Uh, that way I don't have to hunt and peck. That's why I created Reach Your Peak Library. It's not a money-making site. It's just an information resource. But always listen to people like Seth. And when they talk about a book, write it down and then get it immediately before you forget. Uh, I've done that before, Seth, I have to admit. I have been I've guilty of buying a guest buying a book, a guest recommended while still doing the show, which I do not recommend. I've done it too. That's <laughs> so great. I'll be jumping on Audible and I have them on full screen and I'm looking, I don't do that anymore. I don't want to risk yes. uh, anything yes. going wrong uh, because I want to present you in the best light possible. That's how I roll. Um, you look pretty fit um, when it comes to actual fitness of your body. Uh, do you uh, put a lot of it sounds like it from your routine just by itself, you know, freezing yourself to shock and and check checking your uh, bodily functions and signs and all that is is physical fitness very important to you. And if so, you know, what kind of part does it play in your life? Yeah, it's hugely important to me because if you don't have your health, what good is all the wealth? Right. That's the one thing you can't necessarily buy. So I am a lifelong martial artist. I go to my Krav Maga dojo twice twice a week and I train there before work. Um, I have a Bowflex and several different punching bags in my basement and a treadmill. So I run, I lift weights, I do martial arts constantly. So I love this. You're, you're a prime example of what I preach day in and day out. I'm a former certified personal trainer. That was my business prior to this. And, um, and this isn't my business, this show, uh, but I do automation and show people how to do these things, the show itself. But I, I totally get everything you're saying. And, and I, you know, the benefit of working out, of exercising and eating and drinking correctly, the energy it gives you to power through the day. Cause I'll tell you, and Seth, I know you know this, it takes an ungodly amount of energy to really perform at your highest peak level of performance throughout the day. And, and for an entrepreneur, a day can be much longer than a traditional nine to five job. It typically yeah. is for me. And here's the beautiful thing. If you're anything like me, Seth, it's not like I dread any part of it. I love every part of it. It's not like, oh, I'm working more than eight hours. I don't look at it as, as just dreading work. It's, it's not work. It's, yeah, it's a challenge. It's fun. It feeds me all the time. I love what I get to do. Does that, does that describe you as well? Amen, 100%. I love it. I love it. Um, and marketing. So I really want to dive into marketing tonight, if that's cool with you. Um, when it comes to marketing... I know there are many, many, many different ways to go about it. If you were to choose one right now that is most recently giving you the most success, what form or approach of marketing is working today and specifically for you? Because that would hit, you know, make it easier for you to come up with the, the answer that would work. Um, what is working right now in the world of marketing that if you were to tell somebody this is my go to source and you should do this now, what would that be? 
our number one source of business for both our marketing agency and for our clients is a strategic direct response podcast. So we are using our podcast to build relationships. Now, I don't care about the vanity numbers. I don't care about the downloads and the listeners. Those are nice to have, but I'm not trying to sell advertising on my show. We have advertisers, but I'm not looking for sponsorships. I'm not trying to get advertisers. I look at it as profit per relationship. I am trying to either interview someone who I want as a client, or and I'm starting the relationship on a podcast, so I'm not perceived as selling, or I want to interview someone who I want to gain influence with their tribe. So when I interviewed you on my show, you told your world about it. And some of those folks came over and joined our world. So you have a tribe of entrepreneurs, of business owners, which I do as well. So it's all strategic based on who I want relationships with and who can they connect me with. And if you took everything else away and I had to start over with a hundred bucks and a laptop, I would start another podcast from scratch. Buddy, that is a bomb dropping moment, if anything is. <laughs> I'm telling you. Knowledge bombs, bombs of wisdom, smart bombs, every bit of that rolled up. You said exact. Oh, my God. I cannot. This is amazing, my brother. I was just on a strategy call and earlier today. No kidding. And that topic came up about um, exposure. I need more exposure. I said, why? The bottom, re the, the result what you're looking for is more sales. Exposure doesn't mean anything unless it's converting into sales. And you said it perfectly. It's a vehicle and it helps you to leverage and you can now get access to a whole different tribe and see if it's a fit or not. But your face, now you're spreading your message exponentially farther by showing up on other shows and having your own show the other thing I noticed, Seth, is the relationships I've built just from having people like you on the show. It's like unbelievable. Um, they're solid because I am not here to pitch or sell them. I'm not here to pitch or sell you. I'm here to provide value through you to my audience to provide a great service for them. And then if things come of it on the back end, great. But I'm not going to go crazy using this show as my vehicle to advertise. I don't do that. Um, I put in ad spots. Yes. Yeah. That's a, I think you should, everyone should do that. You do this exactly the way I do it. I, I say the same thing. It's not the numbers. Uh, who cares about the numbers when all of the rest is the real reason to do this? And it works phenomenally well. You and I both know that. So, wow, that was awesome. I, thank you. You just really made my day because well, you told me. I, I, my pleasure. I'm here to serve. <laughs> Yes, sir. -y. That is phenomenal, man. Um, so when it when it comes to being an entrepreneur and it comes to achieving success, in your opinion, do you believe that there is some kind of pattern or formula to follow that can help someone else become a success as an entrepreneur? Absolutely. Tony Robbins said it best. He said success leaves clues. If you want something, whatever it is, personal life, professional life, doesn't matter find somebody else who's already gotten it relatively recently and then ask them how they did that or read a book that tells how they did it and do the same thing. And you don't, For we had this conversation on air um, with Kevin Harrington and John Lee Dumas a couple of weeks ago where John Lee Dumas said, you know, if you're just starting a business, you don't hire Kevin Harrington as your coach. A, you can't afford him. And B, he started 20, 30, 40 years ago. You want someone who achieved what you wanted a year or two ago because they still remember what it was like. So if you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to build a professional practice, if you're trying to build a marketing agency and you're trying to get to your first hundred thousand, don't hire someone at 10 million because they got different struggles, different challenges and different expertise. Now you want someone who's like a year ahead of you. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I have to do this again. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> it's funny. The graphics. The, you got to teach me how to do that. <laughs> yeah, the first time I, I implemented this, which wasn't that long ago, I had a young lady on the show and she was awesome. She loved it, which kind of surprised me because it's kind of a masculine thing, but it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. And she said, you know what? After the show is over, she goes, you should start a contest and see who gets the most bomb drops on their show for all the guest speakers. And that's a good that's idea. A great idea. I, don't to, I don't want to pressure anybody. I want them to talk and not listen to bombs drop the whole time. There uh, you go. Love <laughs> it. Um, that's more important is getting the information across. My God. 
uh, golden nugget after golden nugget. I hope everyone watching and listening, whether it's live or whether it's afterward, is take notes. My goodness. You know, it's it's like the this old uh, ancient proverb said, the shortest pencil is far more powerful than the longest memory. So write notes, take notes, get used to doing that. And it, it works. I mean, I didn't use, I didn't always take notes until about 10 years ago when I learned. And I thought, wow, this, this does work. You retain it much better. So please, for yourself, if you haven't taken notes yet, then do watch it on replay and then take notes and put it down. This, this man is literally giving you some secrets to success. And the good thing is they're not even secrets. It's just you may not have been aware of them until now. That's what only thing that makes them a secret. They're, they're widely available. It's just a matter. Here it is, right, Seth? It's a matter of finding the right person. You kind of just said it, who is at the right place for you, but has figured it out already. And that you can simply model them, you know, find out what they did, ask their help and model them. And that is how, how important is that, Seth? It, you know, getting help, asking for help, getting a mentor, getting a coach. Have you done that? I know you have. I can only imagine. And tell everyone here, how important is that to someone actually catapulting their own career and their own business? Yes, I've done it many times. I'm doing it to this day. So my business wouldn't exist without my first mentor, who is Dan Kennedy, who I had to go borrow more than our mortgage to learn to hire and work with so that I could grow and learn how to market my business in such a way that it would take off. And I have been a, mar a bit personal development coaching obsessed ever since. Um, I am in a number of mastermind groups. I have a number of coaches that I work with personally, both professionally on my business and personally on my personal development. And I, we wouldn't have half the success we did without that. Because what I found is my business doesn't necessarily, even though we're a marketing agency, we don't grow because of a new whiz bang marketing technique or because of Clubhouse or because of TikTok or whatever it is. It's because I grew as a leader, as a husband, as a father, as a thought, mm. as an entrepreneur. When I worked on myself, the business magically grows to meet where I am and what level I'm at. Your business is a reflection of you. It reflects your spiritual energy, for lack of a better term. So when I become a better, bigger container and can hold more energy, magically the business makes more money. I got to do it. I got to do it. You know, and these are like 20 bucks per bomb dropping, just so you know. I'm kidding. So um, that I pay you. <laughs> That's the way it should go. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, such wisdom that, you know, look, this is how, you know, you know I always use this. As this one's the easiest go-to low-hanging fruit example, and that's Michael Jordan, uh, Kobe Bryant, the late Kobe Bryant. They did not get where they got without help. They had help all along though i mean every day they had a trainer helping them with working out in seth's basement with him they had a trainer uh and a coach <laughs> and they had a coach uh you know helping them with technique uh all the all the different nuances of the sport and that's exactly what seth is saying now he's got multiple he's involved in multiple different things he has coaches in mastermind groups with peers and with someone leading it i'm sure and people that he can learn from and can probably give back to, which is just as fun. But the thing is, like, you want to be in the game with somebody. I love what you said. That is at least a year ahead of you. I remember uh, as a kid playing basketball in the backyard. and I'll never forget this advice. And that was never play with somebody that is not as good as you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I like winning. You, any better. you play down instead of playing up. You exactly. The dumbest, least successful person in the room. Yeah, and I've heard that several times, especially when it comes to masterminds. And uh, that's just then the the um, the issue becomes how do I get in? They know I'm dumb. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> will you take little old me? I promise not to bring you down. Uh, but that I hated that because I just wanted to win. I'm like, why would I do that? I, I don't want to. You know, I had an ego, and I was a young boy, and uh, I didn't want to lose. But uh, fantastic, my God. Um, do you have a, a team and employees or people that work with you in your business? Absolutely. We have a fantastic team of 44 um, and it's growing every single day who do all the work to make me look good and get our clients great results. And is that um, like employees in the U.S., VAs overseas, a combination of what does it look like there, if you don't mind? 
Uh, the majority are U.S. We have three or four overseas um, who edit some of the audio and video for some of our podcasts, but the majority of them are U.S., English-speaking, in a physical building. And I'm sure you've refined and perfected a system to some degree of picking the right people to become a part of your team. How important is it to have those top-notch good employees in your in your team and on your in your business? They make all the difference in the world because again, the clients are trusting our name and our reputation to deliver the results they want. And those team members have got to be able to deliver that. Otherwise the clients don't pay us, right? Yeah. And have you found uh, a, a particular secret sauce when it comes to filtering out and choosing the next employee? Do you have a system developed to do that? Not as well as I would like. I used to have, so we, we were making baby steps. So it used to be, I looked at every resume, I did every interview, then I passed them on to two of the members of my leadership team, then they did an interview, and then we came back together and decided if we liked the person or not. Since then, that was, I was the bottleneck, we couldn't hire fast enough. So mm. I have a HR person now who does all the initial intake, all the initial interviews, if they make it past her, then they make it to another level. So there's now, we're putting more of a formalized structure in place simply because A, we've got more demand and B, there's so many more people. Like last time we put out an ad, I think we had like 80 applications in a couple days. So Whoa. we needed someone who could, who actually knew what they were doing from a human resources perspective to evaluate them all, decide who got a first interview, decide who got a second interview, et cetera. So we're working on it. I'm glad you, you brought all that up because it helps people realize that don't have a team yet, that there is effort involved in building a team. It's not just put out the the resume or the, the job description out on one of the big uh, job sites and then sit back and pluck the first one that comes in. Uh, that's that's a recipe for disaster, by the way, if that's what you're doing. Not you, Seth, though, everyone watching and listening. Uh, you want to have a way to process them properly and ensure they're a fit for your organization like they have grown to doing that Seth has grown to doing and fantastic uh, 44 that's a pretty large base of employees uh, that's a, a pretty good size organization uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship so my hat's off to you my man God bless you and uh, yeah that's that's gonna be phenomenal and just wanted everybody to know that look it, you don't need to have all that in place from day one no we started uh, with zero me yeah. right and I think most everybody does and then they go dang, I, can, I need to scale, but I, there's not enough of me to go around. So I need some right. help. I need some help, which is a good problem. <laughs> it is. And I recommend for those that might be strapped a little bit uh, or just don't have enough resources at that moment to go full on with a full employee is go the VA route, whether it's over, overseas or in, here in the US or Canada or wherever you're at. Uh, but there are great, gosh, there's so many resources today, Seth. It's like you cannot not find somebody that will be a fit eventually. Uh, and fairly quickly, in my opinion, these days. So Absolutely. I appreciate you being candid about that. That um, and, and that's what I love. Another thing about it, Seth, do you find, I know the answers to these. I just like to ask them so you can answer them. Uh, do you find that in, mo in basically every facet of your business that you're constantly revising, improving, testing, wash, rinse, repeat? Of course, we are. I, I learned um, from one of my coaches that there will always be something broken in your business and you have to find it and fix it. And if there isn't something broken, you need to find something to break and then fix it. <laughs> That's a good one. I haven't heard that last part. <laughs> and that, that would be a good for just testing the, the team, right? <laughs> Go break something, see who detects it. That's a yeah, actually figure out what they break. Why'd you break it? That's interesting right there, right? <laughs> that would be phenomenal. Yeah, uh, and that is that is one thing I love about just business in general and being an entrepreneur because that kind of epitomizes the word entrepreneur. Continually improving, striving to uh, get better, striving to grow, never resting. Uh, and, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's it's fun, invigorating, and life-giving in my, in my view. Um, it just makes – could you imagine, Seth, what would it be like? This doesn't exist, but just consider for a moment, what would it be like if you reached the absolute top? There was no room to go any higher at all, period. You're done. You cannot be flexible. You've hit the top. There's nowhere to go. I mean, you could go down, but who would do that? What would that feel like as an entrepreneur knowing you're stuck and you can't get past that ceiling? 
I, I, I think it, isn't that communism, right? You can't, you have no place that you can't go up. Um, I'd be kind of frustrated. I'd be mad. I would be driving myself crazy going, there's got to be a way through this, whatever that ceiling is, because we're wired to achieve, right? Yeah. And that's the point right there. It's um, we're always looking, you know, we achieve, we look at a goal, we set a goal, we meet that goal, we reach it. What's the first thing you do? What's yes, next? Another one, a little higher, or maybe a lot higher. And then you reach that one. Then what do you do? You do it again. You find it and you just keep, that is the beauty. That's what I, oh my God, how boring would life be if that ceiling actually existed and we couldn't break through? Uh, so thank you. You're, you're very astute, man. I love your fun, your fun interview. Um, I knew that you would be because we talked earlier, but I was on the other side of the fence on that one. Um, very true. Yeah. So what do you do in your, your spare time? I know that you're very avid in, in uh, fitness and you know, everything you just said you do in a day, I don't know how you cram all that in a day, plus work on your business. That's impressive. Um, but what do you do for fun? You know, when you're not working or hobbies uh, outside of the day to day, what you work and, and bring the money in, what brings your money in? What do you do outside of that? Uh, so three little three kids, 14, 12 and eight as recording as of this recording. So uh, I drive my son to lots and lots and lots of soccer. Um, he's on multiple teams in multiple locations. Um, my daughters are into musical theater and dance, um, which musical theater is my original background. So um, there's plenty of time spent there. And then obviously I mentioned the martial arts and I originally started out as a professional magician. So there's that as a side hobby as well. So I'm pretty busy. Holy moly. Okay, musical theater. What, what did you do in that genre? Um, I went to Syracuse University for undergrad because they had one of the top three musical theater departments in the country because at the age of 18, my life goal was to be a Broadway star. And so musical theater, meaning singing, uh, dancing. Acting, dancing. Yep. Wow. My That's stage beautiful. shifted just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know what? That that absolutely, I'm sure, helped. It does. It, especially in doing what you're doing right this very moment. You know, it helps you to be have a presence on camera. You have a great presence. You're very natural. You're smiling all the time. You understand what it takes uh, because you have the training. And these are things people, you know, could take for granted or look over. But, you know, what if, if you want to improve yourself on camera, think about that. You can do what Seth did. That's not why he did it originally. But what it a great. Not, and I, I don't know. There are much cheaper courses of study. <laughs> <laughs> to be good on camera than a four-year degree that is now several hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> that's that's great. And magician. Oh my gosh. So how how recent was that? I started when I was eight. And so how a long time it started a long time ago. Um I haven't performed professionally in a couple of years because of COVID. Um hmm. it morphed into because of work and the kids. I pretty much perform at the kids' schools for stuff. Um, but, but obviously that changed when COVID hit. Oh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh. Do you ever incorporate, um, magic in say presentations when you're on stage? Yes, absolutely. When it's a live physical event. Yes. Yeah. And how does that go for you? It really well. It, it's a definite icebreaker, rapport builder, engager, you name it. Abs yes. I've seen others do it. And I, that's the reaction I had, uh, is that, Hey, this is awesome. And you start with a smile. Every I don't know anybody that doesn't like magic. That is a great craft uh, to to have. And not saying everyone needs to learn how to be a magician to be a successful entrepreneur. But everything that he's talking about, you know, look look at the past life experiences. Everyone has them that were not what you're doing today. And how can you leverage those? Uh, some of them are just naturally leveraged. But with magician, uh, he you know Seth leveraged that and used it on stage as the talent he has, and he found a way to integrate it to help the end result of his presentation. It's just, that's just the entrepreneur mindset. It's awesome. Uh, and it's, it's impressive. This is phenomenal. Um, my gosh, uh, along the way, we as entrepreneurs, you know, the, the beautiful thing when you achieve success, like you have Seth is now mistakes never happen. There's no more failure. It's a hundred percent smooth road and, uh, it's just easy going, right? Right. Um, Sign me up. If you figured out how to do that, let me know. Yes. And so what are some of the notable, if you would call it, uh, you know, a failure is a kind of a rough word, but uh, maybe a hiccup or a bump in a road that you can recall that you experienced in your entrepreneurial walk that you learned from and what did you learn from it and how did you adjust? Sure. So I would say one of my biggest ones was 
seven years ago, um, my wife and I were looking for a new house. Um, we had outgrown our starter house. We just had our third baby. And I was pursuing the one of the largest regional personal injury law firms for marketing. They had heard me speak. They had asked me to come in. It had been a nine-month selling cycle. We had finally gotten to the part where they said, get me a contract. I'll get you a check. And this was a multi-six-figure contract with seven-figure performance incentives. And they were building a new building, and we were going to have free rent in their new building. So I had my wife shopping for a house in the price range based on them saying, we're going to hire you. <laughs> and 30 days later, mm -hmm. after many phone calls, many emails, many text messages, and me camping out in their lobby, I found out not so much. They changed their minds. So I had to then tell my wife, oh, my God, honey, I'm so sorry. We got to go back to our normal price range. I didn't tell you it moved up because these guys said they were hiring us. I had spent, I had hired people. I had spent the money before, not all of it, but I had spent some of it before I had it. I learned some hard lessons that day to not even mentally spend the money until it's actually in your bank account. Uh, that's a great lesson to learn too, because yeah, it's off. I, I mean, I've been there. I think everybody who's of any kind of age 30 or up has probably been there as well, where, you know, you want to, you always want to bet on the positive that something's going to work. At the same time, you got to be realistic because it could financially decimate you if if you put a lot of money into it too early and it doesn't come to fruition. And yeah, it's it's a kind of a it's a kind of a dancing act, so to speak. You know, you got to be very careful. It's a balancing act, and um, you got to weigh it and bounce it off other people, like you've done with your wife. You know, no one has a crystal ball. You know, you went in expecting that's going to happen, and they had no reason to believe it wouldn't, and so you went forward. And that's the way we all get those little trap moments where we go, uh oh, <laughs> need to, uh, we need to readdress that. We're going to change that around a little bit. You mentioned Gan uh, Dan Kennedy, and he's like, what, the godfather of direct marketing, or direct response marketing? Yes. And it's so cool. I mean, the guy is like, he walks on water when it comes to marketing in our space, right? Everyone looks up and reveres this man. And so cool, Seth, that, um, there was a gentleman by the name of Jack Turk. I don't know if that rings a yeah, bell. Yeah, I know Jack. He was on the show, and he was for a, a year. I think it was two and a half years, almost three years. Dan Kennedy had him as his primary copywriter. And I thought, of all people on the planet, Dan Kennedy, number one, needed a copywriter. So, you know, even he is leveraging and delegating. And then... To have the guy that he chose on my show, I was like, this is phenomenal. Yeah, I, I've known Jack for years. He just asked me to promote one of his products, um, which was an honor for me. Um, so, yeah, Jack's been on my show multiple times, and he, it's it's been awesome. Yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, he has a, a great course, Killer Copywriting Fast. Yep. And That's the you one have, he asked me to promote. Yes, and you have some great um, – you have actually kind of a giveaway, a 50% discount, uh, so stay for that. Uh, I'm definitely going to go after that um, and grab a resource. We'll, we'll announce that here toward the end. So stick with us. That'll come along with the prize uh, up there from the uh, TheBigInsiderSecrets.com, giving away the five-night vacation stay. Uh, lots of goodies. This has been amazing, uh, Seth. And here's the thing. I love to close every show with a specific question. And I ask this same question of every guest that comes on my show. Why do I do that? Because it's one hell of a question. <laughs> and because of not, not so much the question itself, but the responses that I've gotten as a result of them. And so I wanted to give this a little time to, to gestate before I pop that question. Um, and so I want everybody to stay on because it is, it's got to be one of the most powerful questions I've ever asked in any interview. That's why I do it every single show. And uh, I can't wait. To hear your response, Seth, uh, especially after, my God, the golden nuggets you have dropped is just unbelievable. As fast as you drop, you drop those about as fast as you get through your morning routine, which was very fast. And uh, that just shows you know what you're doing. And I appreciate you for that. Uh, and then I also promise those that stayed with us toward the end, it's not the end yet, but I'm going to take care of it now. So if you're still with us, then you can win a five night stay at a five-star luxury resort, compliments of thebiginsidersecrets.com. And so 
earlier we were talking about um, keeping your, or I was talking about keeping your attention here on this man. Don't go anywhere. We're still doing that. But for a moment, uh, I believe Seth would agree with me and we would both give you permission to take out your cell phone for just a moment and pull out your text messaging app. Fire that up because I'm going to put on the screen exactly how you can enter to win and then we'll move on with the rest of this amazing interview. So in that text messaging app, pull it up and where you would type in the name of the person you're going to send your text to. Instead, put in this phone number and you may want to write this down because I'm going to take this down pretty quick. Uh, so write down this number, 314-665-1767. Real quick, again, 314-665-1767. And then in the message area where you would say type in or put in an emoji, no emojis, we're just going to put in two words here separated by a hyphen or a dash. And that is peak, P-E-A-K, dash, vacation. Guest experts are allowed to enter. Peak, dash, vacation. That's you, Seth Green, if you want. And <laughs> I love it. I've had actually, I've actually had guest experts win this prize. Everyone is uh, open. He spent his time. Why not? Uh, he's deserving of winning that and having the same odds of winning as you do. All of you, I think you would all agree. He's been giving us some incredible value. Uh, so thank you to the BigInsiderSecrets.com. And then I also want to be able to showcase uh, Seth, you and your business. I have Market Domination LLC. Is that a good one to present real quick and show people what it is you do, the, the market you're looking for, the people you're trying to bring into your tribe? Would that be cool? Absolutely. Fantastic. Let's bring that up. Here it comes with the magic of a button press. So go ahead and uh, give us a quick overview of your company, what kind of clientele you're looking for and what you do for them. Absolutely. So our job is to grow your business so that you can run it. So if you are a author, coach, consultant, speaker, a professional practice owner, um, like a financial advisor, accountant or attorney, you will go to marketdominationllc.com. You can watch the awesome sizzle reel that is right there. Fill out that form and you can get our 15 minute marketing makeover consultation absolutely free. Just check the box, check the button, which one you want. I guarantee you we can solve any marketing challenge you've got in 15 minutes or less. So make wow. sure you register for that. It'll take you directly to our calendar where you can go grab a time slot. And you did mention that we do have a 50% off bonus for mind, body, business listeners and viewers. So if you'd like a copy of our 37 page ebook on how to grow a cult of 50 evangelists who will be out there growing your business for you every single week for a year, click the button, go to the link. And instead of the $14 Amazon price, you can get yours for $7. I guarantee you it will be the best $7 you ever invest in your marketing. I'll bet it's worth many, many, many times that. I'm going to put that in the chat so people can just click on the link as well. Uh, so thank you so much for that. I appreciate that for everyone uh, and for myself, because that's on my list uh, after the show. Watch for another $7 purchase coming through your shopping cart, Seth. I uh, appreciate you for making that offer and allowing folks to get it at a, even, I mean, $14. Come on. That, that would be still a steal because I think everyone can realize and recognize by now with what they've heard from you, Seth, that you're the real deal. What you provide, what you bring to the table is it comes from experience and success. And all they have to do is model it. And this is the first step. Get this book, get this ebook. This is step number one. And then I would say, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, uh, Seth, but the nut, step number two is come over here and opt in yes. and select the uh, option that best fits where you're at. And I'll zoom that in a little bit. And so you can say, I'm interested in a free critique of my sales letter or marketing campaign. That, oh my God, that is huge. I uh, take him up on this. Or I'd like to learn how market domination can handle my marketing needs. And, you know, go in there knowing he's spending his time to help you. So go in with respect, please, please. I implore of you, uh, respect his time. Be on time if there is a, yep, there's a schedule. Be on time. You know, they say early is on time. On time is late and late never happens. So be on time uh, and give him the respect he deserves uh, and you'll get what you want and what you deserve as a result of doing that. So, uh, but definitely take action. If you don't opt in, if you don't take these steps, then you're not gonna go any farther than you are today. Uh, nothing will change. 
and that's just the way the world works. Um, sorry to break it to you, but that's it, right? <laughs> All right, fantastic. So there is the URL. I'll say this audibly for those of you that are listening on podcast, and that is growyourowncult.com forward slash cult dash ebook. Very important that everything after the forward slash is lowercase, no caps. So it's cult dash ebook after the forward slash, all lowercase. It's growyourowncult.com forward slash cult dash ebook. Uh, go grab that right away. Get your 50 seven dollars. My goodness. I mean, you can't, you can almost, you almost can't buy a pack of gum for seven dollars anymore. Uh, the way things are going. I was going to say lunch, but that probably wouldn't work well either. Um, <laughs> A cup of coffee. That's about seven bucks, it seems, these days. So, uh, yeah, for a cup of coffee, uh, change your life, change your marketing, and um, figure out how to grow a cult of people helping to promote your business all year long. And that's your that's your step number one. Devour the information. Take whatever steps are in that book. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be great next steps for you to take, and that's there to help guide you down the path. Find out if it's a fit for you first, and then go. I, I have a feeling that's how Seth Rolls is – you know, he's only going to work with you if you're a fit, right? That is true. We turn away more people than we accept. Yeah. And that, isn't that a lesson in its own right? I mean, how, okay, going back to the earlier days, did you ever accept a client that you wish you never had? Yes, many times. It was a painful lesson that we had to learn repeatedly. And what, what kind of pain did that bring to you? If it's okay to go down that path real quick. <laughs> Sure. I mean, we've had everything from chargebacks, refund requests, lawsuits, you name it. We've been through it until we learned to have better screening mechanisms. Yeah. And that, thank you. That was, there it is. You got it. The screening, the filtering, uh, you're qualifying your clients. And uh, there's so many people that live in that scarcity mentality that if, if a person has a heartbeat and a credit card with room on it, they'll take them as a client. Uh, that is a hor that's a recipe for disaster as well. Uh, because Better. another thing that I noticed is if you bring on a client that really isn't a fit just because they can afford it and they just convinced you for some reason they they will be fine. Um, but they can then really be a cancer to your company in the way that they'll start just pummeling you with question after question and, and time wasting interactions of support requests and all the things that go with it and suck you and your team's time dry for very little gain for them. And so it's very important to, like uh, Seth was saying, is to sift and sort. I use that a different word, uh, to filter and uh, make sure just as important as it is to do the same for bringing on an employee. And so, yeah, master the craft of saying no. It's more just as important, if not more than saying yes to a client after you've gone through the effort of bringing them to your your space with uh, getting their eyeballs on your business, which is what he is the master at doing for you. So be sure to connect with Seth and in the ways we just showed you. It's still on the screen for those of you watching. Um, definitely write that down and then visit it right after the show is over. Grab your ebook. I wanna see his uh, his reporting site light up with orders because that tells me that we have action takers watching this show. I make nothing from this. Uh, it's $7. I wouldn't, you know, if I made something anyway, it wouldn't be much. Uh, but that's not the, the point. The point is we have somebody here right now that can help you to change your life for the better. Uh, he, he's bona fide, no kidding. He's been through it. He has the accolades experience. You've heard it all. Just take action. Just do it. Just go to his website. You see it right there. Get the ebook. Go back to Market Domination LLC. I'll put that one up next. Uh, MarketDominationLLC.com. Visit that and opt in and choose which uh, of those offers you wish to take part of. It's a, you said a 15 minute. Um, yeah. So it's quick. I mean, you see how he operates. The guy is fast and that's good. He's efficient. He'll get to the solution instantly uh, as fast as a cold shower <laughs> or faster. So, hey, that would be a pretty good tagline, huh? We're as fast as a cold shower. So um, <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, so uh, definitely do that. And then, uh, and then we're going to come to our question and then let Seth go because he's had a long day and I want to honor and respect his time being here for you, all of you watching and listening. Will that be all right with you, Seth? That would be fantastic. Let's finish it up. You got it. And I'm going to finish strong, buddy. Um, all right. Let's clear that up. 
So um, here's the thing. Uh, it's a little bit of build up about that question. And I, I just want to make a couple things clear and then we're going to go uh, with the question. And the first thing is when I ask the question, there is no such thing as a wrong answer. It doesn't exist. It's ex the exact opposite is the case. The only correct answer is yours because it is kind of a personal, not in a get in your uh, life knickers kind of personal way. It's, it's just personal because it's, it's unique to each individual. And that's why I love this question. So with that, are you ready? I've been ready. <laughs> I know. Oh, that is you for sure. All right, here we go. Seth Green, how do you define success? Being able to do what I want, when I want, with whom I want, and not having to worry about how much it costs. Did everybody hear that? Did everybody see this? Oh, my. Another bomb-dropping moment by the one and only Mr. Seth Green. Seth, it's been an absolute honor having you on the show. I appreciate you beyond words. What's the best way? Other is is this the best way to, for people to get a hold of you? Is it Market Domination LLC? Is it is it what we had on the screen earlier, uh, or is it Facebook? What's your favorite uh, mode for people to get to you? Uh, either one of the websites or LinkedIn. I'll actually be faster. Ooh, LinkedIn. Okay, thank you. My gosh. Usually people are saying other things like Facebook and that. So. Um, You've been an actual, an absolute treasure. I, I'm not kidding. I, there's no humor in that. I appreciate you. I respect you. Thank you for spending a full hour with us tonight. Uh, and I thank everyone who's watched and listened to this show. And that's it. It's a wrap. We're going to call it a night. Mr. Seth Green, everybody. I hear the thank applause. You so much. You're, you're so welcome. Thank you. And that is it for this edition of the Mind Body Business Show. On behalf of the amazing Seth Green, I'm your host, Brian Kelly. Until next time, we will see you again. So long for now and be blessed, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Mind Body Business Show podcast at www.themindbodybusinessshow.com. My name is Brian Kelly.